Hey everybody, welcome to your weekend review for the week of Monday, June 20th, 2022. The bond market was closed on Monday in observance of Juneteenth holiday. On Tuesday, the MBS were down 14 basis points early, which basically flat at this point for us with all the market movement lately. Not a lot of market moving data this week, however, a whole bunch of Fed speak highlighted by Jerome Powell heading to the hill for the semi-annual Humphrey Hawkins testimony. Contracts on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 were each up 1.5% at the start of trading. Got some good reports out of Apple and Microsoft and also pre-market with Revlon Inc. surging as much as 27% in the wake of its Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. Currently, Fed futures are predicting another 75 basis point hike at the July Fed meeting, which would imply about 150 basis points of tightening in the context of like six weeks. With the Atlanta Fed's GDP Now Index predicting flat growth in the second quarter, new home sales will probably take, a, take more significance than normal. Given the lousy housing start number last week, if they come in bad this week, it's probably going to push GDP into negative territory, which is too consecutive quarters of negative GDP, which is the start of a recession. Sentiment is being helped a little bit this week by comments from President Joe Biden that the recession isn't inevitable. Like we said last week, not a lot of things are inevitable, but things are looking pretty good for a recession coming up. History suggests that bear markets usually take time to find a floor, uh, especially when accompanied by a recession. Thumble Blue's 30-year rate closed at Friday at 5.99%. On a year-over-year -year basis, freight and building material price increases were up 36.3% for the year, which is an awful lot, and that's hurting housing. MBS are flirting with our unofficial technical marker at 99. Uh, below that, we have a 0% retracement and all the way down to 98 and a ceiling of 99.625, which is a wide range which will probably lead to some bouncy trading over the course of the week. The treasury supply consists of a $14 billion 20-year bond auction on Wednesday, so we'll have to see the market reaction to that. A little bit later in the morning, we got existing home sales. They were down 3.4% in May at a 5.31 million annual pace. Year-over-year -year sales were down 8.6%, which is still considered strong considering the rise in rates. Inventory increased 12.6% in April to 1.16 million homes, which is down 4.1% versus last year. This is a 2.6 month supply where six months is considered balanced. The median price is around 407. So we're gonna have to see how this week plays out. Strong day for bonds on Wednesday, June 22nd. Everything happened in the morning. There was a flight to quality from Asia and Europe as everybody is fears of a global recession coming. Powell and several other Fed speakers were unified in their comments regarding inflation, essentially saying that they're going to do another 75 basis point hike next month and keep doing whatever they have to do on the demand side to bring inflation down. They don't really want a recession, but if that's what has to happen, that's what has to happen. Didn't use those exact words, but that's pretty much what they are saying. Fed funds futures still anticipate an 89% chance of 75 basis points in July and 11% chance of 50 basis points. Uh, central tendency is that everybody is anticipating the Fed funds rate will be around 3.5% at the end of the year, which means another 200 basis points of hikes. We had a strong 20-year bond auction today, above average demand. Great quote here from Paul Donovan, chief economist at UBS Global, where he said markets are flip-flopping between recession fears and inflation fears. Today, it's recession fears. MBS are still range trading between 98 and 100.603, which isn't much premium, which is why you're not seeing a ton of premium on your rate sheet. Tenure uh, made a run down to 3.15, which is a pretty big move. Said we ended the day at 99.73 right in that range between the red line and the blue line. Citigroup sees a 50% chance of global recession this year. That's this year, not next, so pretty big chance. Inventory remains an issue. Although it's improving, unsold homes sat at a 2.6 month supply at the end of May. A balanced market is about six months. Lawrence Yoon from, I believe the MBA said, further sales declines should be expected in the upcoming months given housing affordability challenges. With a sharp rise in mortgage rates this year, nonetheless, homes priced appropriately are selling quickly and inventory levels still need to rise substantially. Pretty much sums it up. 
things that are priced right are selling things that are even priced a little over are selling though not another strong open for MBS on Thursday and an overall pretty good day everything started off with growth data out of Europe stoking fears of a global recession as well as some comments from Fed Chair Powell historically we see S&P decline about 35% when a bear market is paired with a recession, so far we are air quotes only down 21%. Fed Chair Powell accepted that a steep rate change could trigger a US recession, but they're gonna go ahead and do it anyway because inflation is out of control and it was not transitory. Also, given the Fed's desire to hold mostly treasury and the fact that we're not writing enough refinances for a natural runoff, he acknowledged that there also may be the need to sell MBSs in the future, which will not help the supply side of the supply and demand equation. Initial jobless claims came in down 2,000 at 229,000, and continuing claims were down 5,000 at 1.315 million, which is a really good number. MBSs are making a run at the ceiling of 100.603 before it retreated. MBSs lost more than three-eighths of a point between 10.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The 10-year actually went down and tried the 3% floor before bouncing up some more. Even after losses overall, it was a pretty good day. And you can credit the PMI data overnight from Europe in helping with that strong start. So we'll have to see how the market reacts tomorrow off of that data. And all in all in the day, we were up 27 basis points on the MBS 4.5. Stocks were up 35 on the S&P. And the yield on the 10-year was down 7 basis points. On Friday, stocks and bonds were pretty flat on the open. Investors are grappling to come to a resolution as to what the future is going to hold. One scenario means that cooling prices will naturally ease up on inflation and the central banks won't have to do as much. The other one is that the central bank will keep pushing up rates until we are in a recession. The prospect of peak rates has a lot of investors starting to price out 2023 bond moves. Their prevailing sentiment is that all of the price hikes on the Federal Reserve are going to happen this year and not so much next year. So short term rates are dropping quite a bit this week. Meanwhile, investors continue to pull cash from equity funds. About $16.8 billion have exited global stock funds in the week through June 22nd. New home sales were up 10.7% to 669,000, which is well above expectations. It becomes even stronger when you add in a positive revision to the previous month. There were 440,000 new homes for sale at the end of May, but only 37,000 were complete. So basically they're just selling inventory that has yet to be built. The median sales price is steady at 449,000, which is up 15% year over year. Here's an interesting stat on this stat. Since the end of 2012, there have been 52 months where there was a negative revision to this number, averaging 43,000. Then there were 59 months where there was an upward revision, also averaging 43,000. Just one month since the end of 2012 has this number been right on the first try. Consumer sentiment came in a little bit lower than forecast. Inflation expectations dropped a bit. Not sure where they're seeing that coming from, but the one-year inflation expectation from the survey is of 5.3% when you couple that on the 8.6% and some compounding. That's about 15% appreciation over the course of two years, which is quite heavy. Like we said, MBS started out flat, but then it sold off as the day went on. Money was coming out of bonds and into the stock market and also into oil. Oil went up quite a bit today. and. You know, we're watching the MBS to see if it'll make run for this dual ceiling. Ceiling is at 100.603, which is converging with the 25 day moving average. That's going to prove as a pretty tough ceiling. Hopefully we can make a run up and through that next week. Also in the news, many trade publications are announcing the start of wholesale price wars. Most notably UWM coming with an updated price match policy. However, only three of the 11 publicly traded lenders had a reduction in cash position in the first quarter of 2022. This is compared to the fourth quarter of 2021. Some stocked away a lot of money. Rocket Companies has more than $2.3 billion in cash. New Residential has more than $1.6 billion. And UWM has more than $900 million in cash. It's going to be an interesting war.
We also hope you check out our sponsor, www.wellthatmakesense.com. When you subscribe, you also get access to our rate updates throughout the day. But today's article was first year accountable for your judgment. Judgment is the exercise of wisdom. Wisdom comes from experience and experience can be accelerated through iterations. Once again, this is part of a summary from a podcast series by Naval Ravikant, who is super smart. And check it out. It'll make a lot of sense for you. As we look at next week's calendar, we have a shortened week with a lot of powerful things happen. Pretty much everything that gets announced on Monday has the potential of moving the markets. Most of the stuff on Tuesday, including a seven-year auction, is coming then, as well as home price appreciation reports. We get final Q1 GDP on Wednesday, and on Thursday, we get core PCE inflation. So that's going to be a lot of news coming throughout the week next week. And I hope you check out a lot of our sources and influences. I hope your week was great. I hope you made a lot of money. Have a great weekend.